All right. So, um, shalom to the brothers and sisters that are here as well. All praise to the Lord. So, we're going to go over a class today called Retaining Righteousness in Affliction. Retaining Righteousness in Affliction. Because when you're getting afflicted, sometimes the old man in you wants to revert back to unrighteousness, revert back to sin. And what I mean, you, you know, some people got, some people have vices like um, when things not going right in their life, they eat. You ever see somebody like that? Like they, they indulge in food that comforts them. Or some people go even more extreme. They indulge in marijuana. They indulge in cigarettes. All right. They drown themselves in alcohol or depression. Right. Lust. You know, you've seen cases where men and women, um, when they feel in a certain type of way, they whore themselves out. Men and women do that thing. You know what I mean? Somebody make them mad or they're going through a trial and tribulation. That's the only thing that comforts them is, you know, being able to be with someone sexually. Although that seems crazy to some, it's reality for others. So you have to retain your righteousness even when you're being afflicted. You understand? Even when you're going through trials and through tribulations. Speaking of righteousness, what is it? Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. What is righteousness? Because somebody will be watching this class and they'll say, y'all niggas ain't righteous. One dude said we wear the, um, the futuristic, um, I think it was Vocab Malone. He said we wear futuristic um, Minnesota Vikings outfits. He said we like the Minnesota Vikings. And I'm like, you, you, can, you can slander all you want. You really want to wear this, but you can't because you're an Edomite. So you really wish you could wear this garment or you can earn this garment, but you can't because you don't have the spirit of God on you. All right? You're Satan. So you can make fun all you want. We'll make fun of you in the kingdom when you're on the outside. Okay? So Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. As he hath commanded us. So the word righteousness means you're in right standing with God. Okay? You, you right with the Father because you're walking in righteousness. What God says is right. Okay? Um, I think verse 18, that same chapter says the same thing. Read 17 and 18. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 17. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And I shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead. That it may be well with thee. That, it, that, you, will be, that you will be able to prosper. That God will walk with you. That's what it means, be well with thee. Meaning God will be with you in your endeavors. Go ahead. And that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy father. So righteousness or to be right with God is to keep his commandments. To do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee. This is what the Bible is talking about. So that's what righteousness is. Now show them in the New Testament. Go to the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse uh, 5. I believe it is verse 6. Excuse me. This is the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 6. This is righteousness. Go ahead. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. It says that our forefather... Um, Zacharias and our foremother Elizabeth, who were the mother and father or the father and mother of John the Baptist, the Bible says they were righteous and they walked in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. That's what it means to be righteous, to walk in God's commandments. Okay? So when you're getting when you're going through affliction, you have to retain walking in God's commandments. You can't fall away from walking with God's commandments and say, Well, I have an excuse because of what I'm going through. I'm going through something, so that's now license. For me to sin. Give me that real quick. I think it's Sirach 15, 20. Sirach 15, last verse. I think it's 20. It's been a little while since I read that. Sirach 15, the last verse. Yes. That's it? Mm -hmm. Okay, read. The book of Sirach, chapter 15, and verse 20. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. So the father has not given any man license to sin. Yes, I know. You're going through it. You're being afflicted, right? You're in depression or you're feeling some type of way or you lost your job or you lost your money, all right? Uh, IRS may have garnished your wages. You, I don't know, you know. Uh, that don't give us a license to sin. That don't say, God, say, you know what? You're going through it. They go a license. Go out there and be a fornicator. No. 
He go on license, go out there and be an adulterer. No, the Bible don't say, mm-mm. God didn't give you license to do that. Oh, it's okay to disrespect your wife and call her out her name because you mad, because you lost the job or because you going through some type of affliction, right? It's okay to curse your husband out and be disrespectful to him and not reverence him as your Lord because you feeling some type of way, because you going through affliction. That ain't in the Bible, okay? That is not in the Bible, okay? So let's go to the book of 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, let's read verse 1. All right, so retaining righteousness in affliction, okay? 1 Peter chapter 4, let's read verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. The Lord is telling you, get your mind right. Get your mind right, okay? Get focused. Why? Because they that have ceased from sin shall suffer in the flesh. Your mind got to be like the same mind that Jesus Christ had. Remember when Christ was on the mountain? Or when he went up in the high place with the um, with Peter and James and John, it said that his sweat was so heavy, it was like drops of blood. He knew what he was going to have to go through, okay? He knew that he was going to have to go through trials and tribulations in order to sit on that throne, in order to die for the nation of Israel. Let's read that. Let's go to Luke 24. Is that what I want? 23, let me see. Luke 24. Or 23, I just read it the other day. Mm. 22 and 20, what is it? Yeah, let's read that. The book of Luke, chapter 22 and verse 44. So, so wait, wait. Uh, let's read 40. So yes, this is Jesus speaking, y'all. Sir. Luke 22, 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. Same with us. Go ahead. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. So when Christ was about to get, a, get, get delivered to be uh, persecuted, to be killed for the nation of Israel, he was going through it in his mind. And an angel from heaven had to come and strengthen him. Okay? Go ahead. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And, what, and guess when he was getting afflicted, it said he prayed more earnestly. Go ahead. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Y'all know how thick blood is? He was sweating so hard that when it hit the ground, it was like thick drops of blood. I ain't never sweated like that in my life. I done been through some things, but never to this magnitude. Y'all understand? So Christ was going through it. So the Bible says we got to arm our minds with the same mind that Christ had. That if you're not going to sin, if you're going to... Keep the commandments of God. You are going to suffer persecution. You are going to suffer. Go back to 1 Peter 4 and 1. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that have suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. So when you suffer in the flesh, it's because you have ceased from sin. Go to Sirach 2 and 1. Y'all know this one. We read it all the time, all the time. But guess what? When you're going through it, it's right on time. Okay, it's a constant reminder of what we have to go through, y'all. Go ahead. Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. If you come to serve the Most High God, if you say, I'm an Israelite and I'm going to keep the commandments, and those people that are calling themselves Jews are not the real Jews, and that we the people of God, when you start saying that Christ is a black man, Moses is black, right? When you stop doing the evil that you were doing and you walk in righteousness, the Bible says, go on here, prepare your mind. Same thing we just read in 1 Peter. 1 Peter said, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Sirach 2 verse 1 says, prepare thy soul for temptation. The same thing. No difference. 
We'll come back to Sirach 2 later. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 4. So just like Christ had to suffer in the flesh, you got to arm yourselves likewise with the same mind because when you suffer in the flesh, it's because you cease from sin. That's why you're getting afflicted. That's why your family member don't want to have nothing to do with you and all that. You're going through that because you're keeping the commandments. Watch this. He's going to tell you that. Um, matter of fact, what is sin? Give me 1 John 3. I forgot about this part. I know some people are new, going to be watching for the first time, and they hear us speak about sin, and they don't know exactly what it is. So for those of you that already know, just let this be a constant refresher. Okay? 1 John 3, verse 4. Let's read that. Yes, sir. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Go ahead. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is when you transgress God's laws. You break God's laws, that's called sin. Sin, very easy, very simple, very straightforward. I don't understand why the Christian church cannot understand it. Or they do understand it, but then they'll say they sin us. Then they'll say you don't have to keep the law. <laughs> it's an uphill climb sometimes. First uh, Peter chapter 4, verse 2. I ain't got time for y'all today. First Peter chapter 4, verse 2. First Y'all wearing me out on Clubhouse. The stupidity that we hear sometimes, oh my God. Just something. That's why I'm drinking coffee, man. Y'all the reason I'm drinking this damn coffee, man. Clubhouse the reason I'm drinking coffee. I'm standing up late arguing with you. It's not all you are idiots, but it's a lot of y'all idiots. You, you, you're disrespectful, too. You, you think you know. You come up there with the white man doctrine. You think you know something. You come up there saying stupid, foolish things. We had a guy come on last night. He wanted to argue me down that Christ wasn't born, that, jo that Joseph wasn't Christ's father, but in the same breath said, Christ came from the lineage of David. Now, how in the hell he going to come from the lineage of David, but he didn't have no daddy? That don't make no sense to me. So was the angel from David? The Holy Spirit come from David? Come on, man. My head hurt. First Peter chapter 4, verse 2 again. Yes, sir. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 2. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Go ahead. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, mm -hmm. wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So your family members speaking evil of you. If you're really walking in this truth, they having text message groups and you're not in it. They got a text message group with you in it, and then they got a text message group with you not in it. So while you posting a text message group, I don't celebrate that. They go into the other group and say, look, there she go. Here she go. There you go. There you go. You know you're part of that cult. You know, don't even mention to him nothing about Christmas because you know he's going to go off and start posting scriptures and posting videos of them dudes in purple. I don't feel like hearing it. Yeah, they got a group about you. They think it's strange that you don't do the things that you used to do because you used to live your life according to the will of the Gentiles, but now you live your life according to the will of God. That's why you suffer. Okay, go to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 15. So I'm setting it up just to let you know this is why you go through what you go through because I know you're going through it, you know. I know you feel, especially for those of you that are really new, like some of us that are not uh, new, mom and them already know what time it is, okay. Daddy, uncle, cousin, sister, brother, they know you ain't bending, okay. It's not, and then once so as you elevate in the truth, it's not necessarily those family members no more. Now it's people on your job trying to get you fired saying that you an, you an Israelite and that you teach on the corner. Now it's people trying to attack your bank account or attack your character or put your face on social media saying that you hate people and that you want to harm people. That's when, you, that's when it start to elevate. You know, it start off down here, it's just mom and dad is mad at you. Then next thing you know, as you grow in the spirit, Satan start attacking you on higher levels. And it's only going to get worse. Okay? So go to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 15. The book of Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 15. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. When you say you're not, keep, you're not keeping the ways of the world no more, that your life is not going to be 
uh, after the manner of the Gentiles no more, you're not walking in lasciviousness and excess of wine and revelings and banquetings and abominable idolatries. When you say you're not falling in the lust of the world no more, the Bible says you have made yourself a prey. How you a prey? They start to mess with you. They start to speak evil of you. They start looking into your history, looking into your background. They start asking people stuff around you. They go around and ask your coworkers, hey, what, what is that guy really about? He don't come to none of our functions. When we talk about sports in the break room, he over there reading that Bible. He always seems like he disconnected from us. He don't laugh at our jokes. Who is this guy? You understand? Is, is he single? Yeah, he's single. He ain't with no woman. They start speculating about you. You made yourself a prey. But the Bible said, arm yourselves with that mind. You're going to be a prey for these people. Go ahead. And the Lord saw it. And it displeased him that there was no judgment. And, and when God see that, it displeased him that they're dealing with you like that. But it's written that it's going to happen because God's word has to be fulfilled. Now, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. So we've been reading so far to recap. We've been going over how even when you're getting afflicted, you have to retain your righteousness. The fact that you're getting afflicted shows that you're walking in the spirit. Okay. Um, 2 Timothy 3, verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. Yes, sir. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, uh -huh. persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Mm. Yea. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Don't worry. If we keep in the commandments, the Lord is going to deliver us out of all these things. Our forefather Paul's back was against the wall many times. And the Lord delivered him. Because the Lord wasn't finished with him. The day, that they, the day that the Lord allowed these nations to take us out, you understand what I mean? That's when you've accomplished your mission on this earth. That's when your life is full of purpose. That's when you know you finished your course. Because when Paul was going through all these things, he was getting beat and thrown in prison, and all these things was happening to him. But it wasn't until you get to 2 Timothy 4 that he says, I have finished my course. I have fought the good fight. He knew he was about to die. He knew when the Lord allowed them to take him and imprison him and then had give him an execution date, when he saw, okay, that, that must mean I'm done here. I'm finished. Same with us. The day that the Lord allows them to take one of us from this earth, guess what we did? We finished our course. We can rest now until our fellow brethren, the servants of God, also have to go through their affliction. You understand? So Paul said, you know how I live. You know my doctrine. You know how I live. You know the purpose. You know my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience. You know how I've been been showing y'all examples you also know the persecutions and afflictions which came at me in Antioch let's go to Antioch real quick let's go to pull up the map for me brothers and sisters pay attention let's show them the map real quick so they'll know what they read about when y'all read Acts and stuff when y'all read about these places go look it up on the map so let's zoom in into the middle so you see Galatia right Galatia was a country okay and within that country you had cities Let's zoom in if we can in the middle, Galatia. So you see Antioch, you see Iconium, and then at the bottom, it's cut off at the bottom, that's Lystra. So imagine Paul traveling within Galatia. He's traveling to those various different cities. When you read the book of Galatians, he's writing to Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, and Derby. He's writing to the Israelites in those areas, y'all. So the Galatians was a country, just like they call you American today. Okay, I don't see how that's hard to understand. These are Israelites that lived in these areas. So he got persecuted in Antioch. He got persecuted in Iconium. And he got persecuted in Lystra. We're going to start off with Antioch first. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 14. Let's deal with Antioch first. Let's see some of the things that was happening to Paul and how he had to remain righteous. He had to keep the commandments regardless of his affliction. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 13, and verse 14. Go ahead. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, 
The rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel and ye that fear God, give audience. So there was in Antioch on the Sabbath day, the law and the prophets were read. They were in the synagogue and the rulers of the synagogue asked Paul if he had anything to say. Paul stood up and addressed the Israelites that were in that synagogue. Okay. Skip down to verse uh, 42. What happened to him? Go ahead. Verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. The Gentiles, there are the Israelites. Go ahead. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. So they followed Paul and Barnabas. The Jews and the religious proselytes are equivalent to your apologetics and your pastors today. They follow the prophets around. Okay? They show up. They try to show up to our church for a church blitz and end up running from their own blitz. And we did not call the police. We stood on the front lines of Detroit and blasted them, and they ran off and went and smoked weed across the street. Yeah, it get real when you come up. Come to IUIC talking that crap. It get real when you pull up to our school. You going to get this work with the word of God. I'll tell you that right now. We're not calling the police. We're not running. We're going to blast you. Hey, give me that mic. It's going down. Oh, you pulled up here? Okay. You better be able to stand. You better come with a big old speaker. All right? So the Bible says that, um, now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. Go ahead. Who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So, when these Jews and these religious proselytes came up, Paul and Barnabas persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So, these are the ones that actually believed. Go ahead. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Next Sabbath, everybody came through. Go ahead. But when the Jews saw the multitudes. When the Jews, these are going into the scribes, the Pharisees, Sadducees, so on and so forth, the religious leaders. Go ahead. They were filled with envy. Whoa, 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 what happened? What happened? They were filled with envy. They got, they got envious at all the numbers. They saw all the numbers. They didn't like that. Go ahead. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. So they put a campaign against Paul. This is what you see on Clubhouse. This is what you see on social media. When they put these videos out about us, you know, when they put these thumbnails up about us, these memes about us, they open these rooms about us. It's the same thing. It's meant to contradict and to blaspheme what we're bringing out. That's what that's meant for. So don't think it's strange. It's not a strange thing that this stuff is happening to us and that we're going through this, y'all. It's the same thing that the Paul and the apostles went through, that Christ went through. All right. So he said, you know, the afflictions and persecutions that I felt at Antioch. Now let's go to Iconium and Lystra. Acts 14, verse one. Very next chapter. The book of Acts, chapter 14, verse one. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. So the apostles getting it in. They in Iconium. And they teaching they ass off. I'm talking about people coming out of nowhere. It's packed in the school. Synagogue packed. There's people outside. You understand? They bringing it out. The Bible says so much so that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believe. Now, those Greeks are Greek-speaking Jews. Those are Israelites. Northern kingdom and Greek-speaking Jews. Don't let it fool you. Don't let they, they, them twist your doctrine. These the Israelites we're talking about. And who cares about you clipping our videos? That ain't far-fetched to believe this because we can go in other precepts to show you that. So they can clip it all they want. Okay? Keep reading. But the unbelieving Jews. But the unbelieving Jews that didn't believe what Paul was bringing out and the apostles read. Stirred up the Gentiles. They stirred them up. Go ahead. And made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Now you going to listen to them. You know, hey, group. Now you know that they killed Joy Morgan. You know they women ain't happy. I can show you videos where they women saying they not happy and that their husband treat them like slaves. They stirring up people's mind to make them evil affected. They just, they, they are the black equivalent of the Ku Klux Klan. Huh? They the number three hate group in the whole country above um, the Ku Klux Klan. Matter of fact, they 17 spots above them. Yeah, these dudes dangerous. And you simple as hell, you don't do no research yourself. You say, yeah, I guess so. That's the same thing they did during this time right here. Go ahead. 
Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Read. But the multitude of the city was divided. Go ahead. And part hell with the Jews and part with the apostles. So there's a split because of these people. Some people believe that the apostles are on point. The other ones believe, nah, they ain't right. They wicked. We're going to roll with the Jews. Go ahead. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. What they wanted to do? Use them despitefully and to stone them. Read. They were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Lyconia. And unto the region that lies round about. You see what they did? The apostles said, we got to get out of this city. They finna stone us. They finna kill us. That's how bad it got. So that's why he said, you know my persecutions and my afflictions. What else happened to the brothers? Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19. Yep. And, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. So they, fled, they followed the apostles. Go ahead. Who persuaded the people. And having stoned Paul. What they do to Paul? Stoned Paul. So when Paul was at Lystra, they stoned him. Yeah, they stoned the brother. Go ahead. Drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. And then they drew him. You know when somebody drew, draw you out of the city? They mean they drug him by his feet outside the city. They stoned him, thought he was dead, and drug him by his feet out the city. This happened to the apostle Paul. Go ahead. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, he rose up. And came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. So Paul got stoned, and the Bible said he died. He died, and the apostles prayed for him. The spirit came back into him. He got up, probably got him a little ginger tea, you know what I'm saying, got him some lamb, and said, you know what, y'all ready to go to Derby? Bro, you just died yesterday. You don't need to go to Derby. Stay here. You know, that's what these women be saying. Baby, don't go. Ah, ah. Don't go. You still got a bandage on your head. You bleeding. But the apostles, the spirit of the apostles that send these men, they going to get their behind up, and they're going to say, baby, I love you, but God called me to do this. Don't get in God's way. I see you when I see you. And they're going to go to that city. I've seen it happen. I've been out the country with brothers that ain't got sick. And the next day, they feel a little bit better. They go back to camp like it ain't nothing. Okay? So I've seen it happen. The apostles are back. Okay, the Acts of the Apostles are continued, okay? So they went through persecution. Paul went through persecution uh, in these areas. Go ahead. And when they had? And when they had preached the gospel to that city. So they went to Derby and preached the gospel. And had taught many. And they taught a lot of brothers again. They returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. Man, listen, these brothers is on fire. Paul just got stoned, y'all. The apostles prayed for him. He came back to life. Now he go right back to the same city that they stoned him at. The people that killed him, they weren't in jail. They were still let, let loose on the street. He went right back. You know. Now you know because put yourself in the shoes of the people that did that to him. They thinking they did God's service. Now this dude done came back like Lazarus. And he teaching just as hard as he was teaching before y'all stoned him, you realize this dude crazy. He wilding out. How in the world are you going to go through that and then come right back and teach on the same corner that you just got killed on? Because when that spirit in you, it don't matter. You're going to keep on fighting. You understand that? Read again, verse 22 now, I mean. Verse 22. Go ahead. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So Paul and the apostles went through much tribulation. People were out to hunt their lives. He had to go back to let the brothers know, yeah, they stoned me, but I'm back. And I'm here to teach y'all and show y'all this is what we got to go through to enter into the kingdom of God. That's a faith booster right there. If you believe the Bible, if you study this Bible and you believe these are your ancestors, when you read this, the spirit of fear should leave you because you realize, look, if they can go through it, well, I can go through it. That's how you got to build your faith up. That's what you got to be telling yourself. When you're reading these words, you got to envision what they were going through and then put yourself in that same position. See how they reacted to it. 
and say, you know what? If I was in that same position, I would react the exact same way. And you fast and you pray for the Lord to build your faith up to be able to do that. That's the Bible. Okay? So, the affliction is to try you and to prove you. Go to 1 Peter 4, 12. So, the affliction is to try you. The affliction is not to make you lead the truth. If you lead the truth, it's because the faith that you had was small. You had small strength, small faith. It's meant to try you. I'm going to show you that. Go to 1 Peter 4 and 12. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Yep. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. So don't think it's strange, because it's not strange that they're trying to tack you on social media. It's not strange that they're trying to put in laws to imprison you for passing out flyers. It's not strange that all of a sudden there's whispering at your job about you being a Hebrew Israelite. That's not strange. That's not, that's, that's, it's not strange that your social security number is linked to a profile on Canary Mission or the IRS or whatever the case may be. That's not a strange thing. Don't think it's strange. You realize what you're doing? Do you realize what you're a part of? You think they just going to give you the kingdom? You think the white man going to spend all these, all these trillions and trillions of dollars to conquer the planet Earth? All the lies that he done put in place to teach you that you're nothing and your wives that you're nothing and your children that you're nothing and just going to sit here and just watch you tear it all down and it all crumble before his eyes? Hell no, you wouldn't even do that. If you was him, you would fight against what we're doing too. Because it affects your wives and your children. It's either your wives and your children or the Negroes who you had in slavery for 400 years, wives and children. Who are you going to choose if you was in their position? You're going to choose us. You're going to say, to hell with them niggas. My wife got to eat. My children got to eat. My family need generational wealth. To hell if they in the ghettos. To hell if they are uh, dying or in prison. I don't give a damn. It ain't my people. I don't know. They got you fooled with the whole Christianity God so loved the world. They don't even believe God loved the world because if they did, they wouldn't have uh, you as a guinea pig for their uh, medical apartheid. If they, if, if, if they really felt like God so loved the world, they'll come to the hood right now with the billions and billions of dollars that they're spending on these arenas to watch grown-ass men smack each other on the ass and wear dresses to the game. You know that's what they do now. You, you ever watch the NBA? They take pictures of them coming into the game, and these niggas got on whole dresses. Ooh, Russell Westbrook stunned tonight. Look at that. And they take pictures and put it up on social media, and they get money from that, and then they put that money back into the business model. Meanwhile, two blocks down the road from the arena, it's the ghetto. It's the hood. It's potholes. It's murder. It's drug dealing. It's prostitution. And it's right there. You understand? So if God so loved the world, why they won't just spend their hard-earned money to help you like they helped their ancestors when they gave them hair right and invited them over here and then moved Gad to the West Coast? Then once they moved Gad to the West Coast, they're like, yeah, I know we said y'all can have this. But her, um, my cousin them coming from Scotland next week. I'm going to need y'all out by Friday. You understand? We got this land over here called a reservation. I know you got 270 million acres but here go two acres. You good? You good? Casino? Yeah, you can have a casino. We'll run it. You can have it. We'll run it, though. You understand? We'll collect the money. The, the owner of the casino is actually going to be a Caucasian who got 1% Indian blood, apparently, and paid $5 to become an Indian. He'll run your casino. Come on, man. But God so love the world, though. They don't believe that. They do not believe it. So don't think it's strange that these things are happening to us, y'all. It's not strange because the Bible says it would happen. What we are speaking is changing the world for the better. Our world. And it's destroying theirs. First uh, Corinthians 4. First Corinthians 4 verse 9. What your husband is a part of for you sisters that's married. Every day he come home, he need to be comfortable. I don't know why y'all give a brother a hard time, man. The brother should come home and be comfortable. He shouldn't come home and you plant a whole bunch of stuff on his plate. Unless it's just the highest priority. We're getting evicted tomorrow. That's the only, that's just, when the brother come home, give him time to gather his thoughts. Okay? Meet him at the door. Comfort him. 
feed him, all right? Whatever else you got to do for your husband. And then let the man be for a minute. Then once he get his mind right, he'll come out, hey, what y'all got going on? Y'all here playing a game? What y'all doing? Let's go and watch. Let's read the scripture. Let's watch class. Let's do this. Let's go to the movies. Let's go out to eat. He'll do that because we know what our wives need. But when we come home, y'all can't bum rush us with everything that's going on. Okay? And this is why. Read. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9. For I think that God have set forth us, the apostles, last, as he were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. So we are made a spectacle to the world, y'all. When the world see us, some people see us like they saw the apostles and say, man, these are men of God. Some people see us and say, that's a hate group. And we need to put laws in place to imprison them niggas. We need to do things to make them lose their jobs as if you don't have a wife and children. Yeah. Yeah. They want you to lose your job so your wife and your children can't eat. Yeah, they want to put you to death so your wife and your children be left alone. And, you know, we be getting life insurance and stuff, right? I'm talking about Israel. We, you know, we get a life insurance. I wouldn't be surprised that after you die, they try to frame it as a suicide and won't let your wife get the insurance money, man. I'm telling this folks, the damn devil, man. I don't trust them. These are the things that they do. You work hard and you pay a life insurance policy for 20 years, get put to death in this truth, and they say, oh, well, he was a part of a hate group, and that justifies him being killed. Therefore, your wife and children are not eligible for the life insurance. Leave her by herself. Broke. Folks, the damn devil, man. They don't care about our wives and children. I don't know why y'all black women think the white man care about you. He don't. You're a pawn. You are a chess piece to get to that man. So it's, you need to be behind that man. Why? Because he is an apostle. He is appointed to death, some of them. And they're a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. That's the mindset. Okay? Keep reading. We are fools for Christ's sake. And guess what? People call your husband a fool. People say evil things about your husband on social media, y'all. Go ahead. But ye are wise in Christ. Go ahead. We are weak, but ye are strong. So we going through it, but y'all are strong because y'all see our example when we get afflicted and it strengthens your spirit. Go ahead. Ye are honorable. You honorable. Why? Because you're not out there on the front lines. So you're not looked at or despised the way the men are that go on the front line, the apostles. Go ahead. But we are despised. They hate us. Even unto this present hour. Hold on. Read that part again. Yes, sir. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. You honorable and we despised. That's what the Bible's saying. They hate the men that go out and teach the gospel. Why? Go to uh, Isaiah 13, verse 1. Why do they hate these men? that go out and teach this gospel so boldly on the street. Because if we was insignificant, y'all, <laughs> they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. The reason they're doing what they're doing is because they know who we are. And what we're doing is impacting them. You don't have the statistics that the white man has. He got statistics. He can see. I notice around Christmas time, less people are buying gifts. Who is teaching against Christmas on the earth? Oh, it's the Israelites. I notice that women are starting to submit to their husbands. There's a large percentage of women that are saying that they'd rather be married than to live a hot girl summer. Who is teaching against that? Oh, the Israelites. They're looking at the statistics, and it's affecting their money and their power and their position. You just don't see it. We don't know the numbers. He's out putting numbers out all the time, lying. Talking about the numbers don't lie. But you lie, and you manipulate stuff. So you don't know what, what's really going on behind the scenes. Okay? Can you read? Let me read that. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 1. Yep. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Go ahead. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand. That's when we be out there teaching like that. They tell us to calm down. Now we got to teach like that. The Bible says shake the hand. Read. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. And then what they do? They go get the SPLC, the ADL, the, the, all the L's and C's and D's, whatever. All these damn acronyms. They can't keep up with them all. And they put all these things, they mess them together, and then they go to government, they go to Congress, and they pass laws to try to get people on their side to destroy us. So we teach the gospel. People complain, go to the government, 
and then they start to institute laws to persecute us because we're a spectacle. Go ahead. I have commanded my sanctified ones. The sanctified ones is the prophets. Go ahead. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. The mighty ones are, are the angels. Go ahead. Even them that rejoice in my highness. Go ahead. The noise of a multitude in the mountains. Read. Like as of a great people. Like as of a great people. Go ahead. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. What God doing? Mustereth the host of the battle. God mustering the host. So we teach God sent his angels out and then they start to make these prophecies come to pass. That's why all over the earth you're seeing derailments, earthquakes, war, the countries becoming in alliance with each other, countries that never dealt with each other before are now saying, you know what? I don't like America either. What's up? You trying to, you trying to tag team? And they doing it. That's what they're doing. And we over here in America inside this bubble looking like, I wonder what Beyonce going to wear to the BET Awards. I wonder who going to win the NBA championship. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder when the next dance going to come out because I'm tired of these same dance they're doing. Okay? That's the stuff black people in America worried about. Okay? But the, the rest of the world, they see what's going on. And it's because the prophets are prophesying. Don't let it, don't get it twisted. We're not regular men, okay? This is not a regular mission. This mission is to bring back our king, all right? Revelation 12, 15. Revelation chapter 12. Let's read verse 15. The book of Revelation chapter 12 in verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. You hear that? It's all to make sure that we carried away of the flood. What is that flood? It's their propaganda, their lies, their social media. I'm going to show you that today. In the class today, I'm going to show you what they're doing. Just like we showed you on Escape Plantation last week, and if the Lord allow us to live until this Monday, we're going to show you again, okay? We're going to show you all the evil that they're doing so you won't be surprised and think it's strange when these things happen to us. Go ahead, read it again. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. The serpent is Satan, the spiritual demon, Satan's, whose spirit is in the white man. So it's the white man who has the spirit of the spiritual demon, Satan, in him. Yes, he is the devil. I know that hurts some of y'all feelings, but it is what it is. Okay? Read. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Read. And the earth helped the woman. And, but the earth going to help us. Go ahead. That means wisdom going to help us. Go ahead. And the earth opened her mouth. And swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. That's why your husband ain't got time to argue with you at home about petty stuff. That's why if it ain't got nothing to do with him, take it somewhere else. What do I mean by this? Some of your husbands are leaders. And he got a lot of things to do in the body. If it don't, if it's not within what his scope of work to do within the body, don't bug him about it. Go to the people who's in charge of that particular office and let this man focus on being able to, what the Bible says right here, swallow up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. That's what Clubhouse is. That's what these classes are. Why you think we put them out? It ain't so we can look good on the camera with the garment on. No, it's to be able to teach the people so they won't get caught up in the flood and carried away. And what is that going to cause us to do? Read. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, mm. which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, in case you sleep and you've been under a rock, we are at war. We are at war for our lives and for the lives of our wives and our children, y'all. It is what it is. That's what's going on right now. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. Go to that, uh, that first uh, picture I sent. I had them all in order. Let me show you something. <sighs> we are at war. All righty. So this is the Canary Mission. Y'all know about them. Let's read that. Canary Mission. Nothing says anti-Semitic like posting an anti-Semitic meme at IUIC Dallas. If you want to smear Canary Mission for calling you out on your anti-Semitism, try harder next time. Love the Angry Birds. All right. We got a microphone. Give me a mic. Give me a mic for the brothers in the crowd. I got questions. I want to see who in the spirit. I want to see what y'all see. You got a mic for me? 
All right. All right, give it to Soldier Hezekiah. You stay around too, because I got a question for you too. All right, Soldier Hezekiah. Most high Christ bless. Shalom, leadership. Most high Christ bless. So here's my question for you. Go back to the uh what do you see when you see this? What are you thinking? Well, I see a whole bunch of um false Jews mad at the fact they be bringing the word of God. Okay. They mad because we teaching the word of God. Okay. All right, what else you see? I see they um they made a symbol of the angry bird. Okay, well, we did that. We made that. That's our thumbnail. Yes, sir. That's it? Oh, thank you, bro. That all you see? It's all right. That's all you see? Because yeah, you're not right. wrong. Yeah, that's all okay. I see. Okay. Give it to uh, Arye. Brother Arye. Shalom. Most what high you, Christ bless. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. What do you see? Um, I see that they stated the fact nothing says anti-Semitic. I post mm -hmm. an anti-Semitic meme, and uh, we all know that's lies because we are Semitic. Okay. Semitic. You right. Both of y'all right. You're not wrong. Also, Malachi, what do you see? That they mad and trying to uh, cause slander. They slandering us because oh. they mad. Okay. So they're trying to say we're anti-Semitic. They're trying to say we're a hate group, right? They put this out as a uh, means of trying to slander us, right? I'm going to put y'all on game. They scared. Why would you why would you respond to us? Why would they take this this ain't theirs? They went on social media, copied it, and put it on their social media. Why? They scared. They ain't never seen black men organized like we organizing, y'all. They're in fear. Why why respond? If you if you're insignificant and you the base, you ain't crap. Why would I respond to you? I'm gonna just keep putting out slander about you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You ain't got the money or the funds that I got. They scared. That's why they put that up there. They confused. Wait a minute. We slander all these people and they never come back at us. They don't have the means to come back at us. But these niggas, they still going at us. What the hell is this? Hey, give me Psalms where it said God going to laugh at them. Psalms 2 and verse, let's read uh, 4. Is that it? Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 4. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. You hear that? That's what God, God got them in derision because we going back at their neck and they like, hold up. They on the offense. They supposed to, they want us to be on the defense because they putting our pictures up. They hoping that that's going to make us say, you know what, man? It ain't worth losing my job. It ain't worth the people, people not liking me. My mama seeing me on social media, paying me as a hate group. And we like, the hell with that. We're going to keep going at your neck. Now they like, oh, God, these niggas is ill. And what he said, these niggas is ill. They like, wait a minute, hold up. They ain't supposed to be doing this. They supposed to back up and retreat like everybody else. But we ain't backing down, y'all. So now they getting like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, we never had this happen before. Uh, put up a meme that they put up to say they're anti-Semitic. But it's really showing that they triggered. They afraid, y'all. They afraid. They ain't never seen black men move like this. Watch. Watch how, watch how it escalates. Watch how they start realizing these dudes is for real. Okay? That's the flood that's going out of the dragon's mouth. Okay? Go to Genesis 15 and 20. So somewhere there's a black person that has never, ever even heard of IUIC. But they going so hard to slander us and putting our videos and pictures everywhere that this going to happen. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 50 and verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. Read. To bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Somebody going to see that and say, let me research these brothers. Like the brother off uh, Clubhouse the other night. He been listening for two years. He come on the stage all the time. I just thought he was just somebody that just come in and listen. He's like, yeah, man, I went to my first Sabbath three weeks ago. I've been going to the Sabbath three weeks in a row. We're like, what's going on Sabbath? Where? And he told us what city he was in. And I was like, this whole time he been listening. And he finally said to hell with it. I'm going to see what these men is really about in person. I pray to the most high. You cannot stop this. You can't. This is God's work. That's why they scared. They starting to realize, I thought these dudes was fly by night. And they the real deal. They not fly by night. These the prophets of God back on earth. Now go to that video.
Now, there's a man named Jacob Bame, B-A-I-M-E, okay? I think he's a sodomite. I think he's gay. You'll see how he move in a minute when we pull his video up. But um, he's one of the leaders of this these different uh, organizations that they've put in place, okay? Now, let's look him up real fast, okay? Let's play this video of what he says about Canary Mission, all right? Let's play it. But do you like curious just to see what they look like? I, could, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> you couldn't? Okay. <laughs> but, you know, Canary Mission is a good example. Go back for me. And drop the disclaimer. I want y'all to see his mannerisms. These dudes, they be having money, man. These, these, these Edomites be Sodom, bro. Go back. Watch how he moved. He the one that got the orange striped shirt. Watch his movement. Y'all tell me. Pause and tell me if he look gay. Okay? Pay it. You're right curious just to see what they look like. I, could, I couldn't. I couldn't. You no. couldn't? Okay. <laughs> but, you know, Canary Mission is a good example. Look! Ain't that gay? Am I wrong? Did y'all see that? He gay! <laughs> Am I wrong about it? You saw the movement of the neck. When they get the roll in their neck doing all They gay. He gay. Okay? And he mad. All the women know. Women know fish when they see fish. That's what he is. He doing all like that. Yeah, he gay. So <laughs> all them Edomites that be having that position of power be sodomite. I'm telling you, man. It is what it is. It ain't slander. I guarantee you. Go look at his history on his phone. I guarantee you he got gay porn on it. I guarantee you. Go back. I ain't lying. I, oh, bro, we know. We the prophets. We can see it. The script said a man gate and constant laugh to do what? Show what he is. Yeah, what it is. You can't disguise if you're a homosexual. There's no homosexual that we can't see that game. We see it. You could be the most biggest, strongest athlete. We can see it. You're, you're, the Bible says you're going to be able to see it. You're going to be able to tell what a man is. All right, go back. So y'all saw the rolling of the neck. Play it. But do you right curious just to see what they look like? I, could, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> you couldn't? Look. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, Canary Mission is a good example. Canary Mission is highly, highly effective to the extent that we monitor the students for justice in Palestine and their allies. So he just told us something. They use Canary Mission as a way to slander people. That's what they do. They're using this Canary Mission as a way to paint a picture about the Israelites, uh, this group called the BDS, all of that, right? Go to the next one. Go to the next video. Watch this. Go ahead. Aviva Gold Volgenstein. So just the expose was on these anti-Semitic tweets. They uncovered 14 current students, five recent graduates at the University of Tennessee that had tweeted all of these horribly anti-Semitic things. The evidence was released by an anonymous group within the pro-Israel lobby. They're called Canary Missions. Nobody really knows who they are. Yeah. Um, they... The white man don't go in. They think we dumb. He don't go into business with people that he don't know nothing about. He don't do that. Esau covered all his bases. There's no way they would take information from you if the information is lies. Slander. They got to know a little bit about something. There has to be some truth to the things that they're putting out. They're lying. Don't get me wrong. They're lying. For the mass majority, they're lying because they don't want these people teaching these things. But what I'm saying is Esau don't go into business with people that he don't know. He don't trust information that he himself hadn't vetted or at least the people that he's talking to he hasn't vetted. No. So the fact that she brought up Canary Mission, oh, nobody knows who they are. No, everybody knows who they are. You're a part of them. All of y'all are a part of them. Stand with us, uh, the Ministry of Israeli Affairs, all that. The 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 uh, the David Project, uh, APEC, all of them. They all are together. SPLC, ADL, the CAA. They all together, y'all. They all in one group, and they dividing the money up against different groups. Esau started LLC for nothing, y'all. He start LLCs, S Corps. Don't let it fool you because it's got an LLC on the end of it. Make you think that it's legit. No, it's a dip. You, they put in movies all the time how drug dealers launder money through uh, laundromats. 
You think a white man laundering money through a laundromat? No. He's, he's laundering money. He's cleaning money. He's, de- he's giving money to organizations to come against us and to slander us. Y'all understand? So that he can have his win at the end. That's what it's all about. All right? Did we finish that? We did? Go to um, Deborah Lipstead. Her name is Deborah. <laughs> Crazy. It was right after the video of the bishop. It's, it's Deborah Lipstead. I'm just showing y'all how deep the rabbit hole goes. It don't stop. It does not stop. Remember why we're going over this. Think it not strange that you're going to be going through this fiery trial, but you got to keep the commandments through it all. You got that for me? Yep. Let's read that, y'all. Pay attention to this. Ambassador Deborah Lipstadt, Special Envoy to Monitor and Combat Anti-Semitism. Special Envoy. They call her the Ambassador. And she's set up to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. Go ahead. Office of the Special Envoy to Monitor and Combat. Yeah. Deborah E. Lipstadt was confirmed by the U- U.S. Senate on March 30th, 2022 as the Special Envoy to Monitor and Combat Anti-Semitism. With the rank of ambassador mm. as special envoy, she leads efforts to advance U.S. foreign policy to counter anti-Semitism throughout the world. Oh, it's go deep. <laughs> or throughout the world? To counter anti-Semitism throughout the world? Now, what do you think she's doing? Mm. How is she able to have a reach all over the world? She got contacts. She got Amalek in all these different countries putting money together to start these various organizations to go against what they call anti-Semitism. It don't matter where we at teaching this gospel, they're going to try to find a way to come against us, y'all. Go ahead. Special Envoy Lipstadt has a storied career as a historian, academic, and author. So they handpicked her. Go ahead. At Emory University's TAM Institute for Jewish Studies, which she helped to found, she served as the Dorot Professor of Modern Jewish History Mm -hmm. and Holocaust Studies. Uh She has also taught at the University of Washington, UCLA, and Occidental College. Special Envoy Lipstadt also served as the director of the Brandeis Barden Institute and was a research fellow at the Vidal Sassoon International Center for the Study of Anti-Semitism at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Watch this. Her numerous award-winning books include The Eichmann Trial, Denial, Holocaust History on Trial, Denying the Holocaust, The Growing Assault on Truth and Memory, and Beyond Belief, The American Press, and The Coming of the Holocaust, Hmm. 1933 to 1945. She received the National Jewish Book Award three times, most recently in 2019 for anti-Semitism, here and now. Her biographical study of Golda Meir will be published by Yale University Press in 2023. I told you, they went and got one. They went and got one that they think can hold her own against the Israelites. And she not finna come on no social media site and try to go at us. She about to be driving the, she about to be steering the ship for all these organizations to make sure they get the money that they need to try to slander us and do a campaign against us. That's why all of a sudden they doing videos, they doing thumbnails, they so, they searching people's social media. Like that costs, that take time and that costs money. You need the top engineers, the top cyber technology or the cyber security people to be able to hack into certain things. Don't be, don't be surprised if one day they hack into your phone and start typing a message. You looking at your screen typing a message and it ain't you. I'm telling you. These people will go to whatever lengths they possibly can to destroy the children of Israel. Go to the next one. Go to the lobby, uh, USA episode three. I think that's what I wanted. No, don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. Let me go back to the scriptures real quick. So remember we read in um, Revelation 12, 17, that they were, they were wroth with the woman and went to make war with her seed, right? Go back to 1 Peter 4, verse 13. Don't think it's strange that they're coming against us. We still have to retain our righteousness. We got to stay in these commandments. It's our only protection. You cannot leave the truth and stop keeping God's laws because you're going through something. Gird up your loins and prepare yourself for the battle, all right? 1 Peter 4, verse 13. Read 12 again. Yes, sir. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Go ahead. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Breathe. But rejoice 
And as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, you are part. You are a partaker of Christ's suffering. Go ahead. That when his glory shall be revealed, that when his glory shall be revealed, go ahead. Ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You hear that? The Bible says, "But rejoice in as much as you are partaker of Christ's sufferings." What we going through and what they doing, y'all, is a confirmation that you are in the right place. This is a confirmation that you're not a part of no hate group. That you're not uh, the true Israelites. Because if you weren't the true Israelite, the white man dismissed misinformation all the time. He don't care. You know how many videos you can find online about the Illuminati? <laughs> Conspiracy theorists? He don't give a damn. Go ahead and make a video. Get 20 million views. You can't prove none of it. But when you say you the Israelites and then you start going in the Bible and you start going into history and you start going into uh, uh, geographical studies and all these different things, archaeology, they start saying, wait a minute, hold up. This is the truth right here. This is what we've been trying to suppress all this time. And now they're coming out with it. This is how you know you in the right place. Read it again. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. They did Christ the same way. Go ahead. That when his glory shall be revealed. When Christ comes, read. Ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Why are you going to be glad? Because of the persecution you had to go through for his name's sake. So when you see him, you're going to be like, man, thank God you're here. Now we can go home. Go ahead. If you be reproached for the name of Christ. So if you be reproached or shamed for the name of Christ, read. Happy are ye. You're supposed to be happy about it. Go ahead. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Read. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. So notice what it says. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. It's because you're doing right. That's why you're being persecuted and reproached. Because you actually doing right. You actually walking in righteousness and they hate it. They can't stand it. They can't take it. It's bothering them. It's keeping them up at night. Go to second, um, go to second Thessalonians chapter one, verse four. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verse 4. Watch this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 4. Go ahead. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Read. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. What is this? A manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. That's what it meant when it said the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. See, you see yourself, you look in the mirror and you're looking at uh, a blemish on your face or you overweight right now, which you can get, you can, you can, you can lose the weight. You know, you just need to be encouraged. You need somebody to encourage you, somebody to, dis to keep disciplining you. You can lose the weight, right? These are small things, things that you can easily overcome. Some of you not happy with your skin and all that stuff like that. There's remedies for that. There's all kind of creams and stuff that I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about, not talking about no damn magic cocoa butter trying to make yourself light skin. Your beautiful black skin is beautiful. For those of you that's watching from Africa, y'all love to put that damn cocoa butter on your body and your elbow be black as hell and your rest of your body no don't do that you're already beautiful as dark as you are what i'm saying is you looking at yourself as insignificant but god says the spirit of glory rests on you so when the angels see you and even you know how when a, a dog see you how they go crazy when a dog see you he go crazy that ain't no coincidence when animals see you, they know who you are. They see the spirit and the glory of God on you. They see different from how humans see. Remember the donkey saw the angel. When you read in Numbers, what is it, Numbers 22 or 23? The donkey saw the angel. The man couldn't see the angel. The Lord had to open the man's eyes so he could see it. So the animals see in the spirit world. They see who you are. Satan see who you are. The devil see who you are. Esau know exactly who you are. The spirit and the glory of God rested upon you. And the things that you have to go through, your persecution, your tribulation that you endure, is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Go ahead. That ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Read. For which ye also suffer. Because you suffer for it. Go ahead. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Mm. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. So the Bible says it's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. The Canary Mission trying to trouble us. Stand with us trying to trouble us. SPLC. All these different groups and organizations they put in this place to lie and slander us. 
to try to get us fired from our jobs, to try to kill us, to try to set up a uh, legislature to put us in prison, to deter us from teaching the gospel. If we just stop teaching the gospel, they'll leave us alone. It's because we teach the truth. That's what they got a problem with. Keep reading. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God Read. and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ Read. who shall be punished with everlasting destruction. So the Lord said he going to punish them with everlasting destruction in flaming fire. He going to take vengeance on them for his people. Go ahead. From the presence of the Lord uh -huh. and from the glory of his power Read. when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Who, who God going to be glorified in? In his saints. Who Christ going to be glorified in? His saints. That's why I told you the spirit and the glory of God rest on you. The spirit and the glory of God rest upon you. Your persecutions, your tribulations, the things you got to go through in this truth, while, while retaining your righteousness, is a manifest token that God dealing with you. That's why you getting persecuted. You, you ain't sinning like you was. I'm not saying you don't battle sin, but you ain't out here doing the wickedness you was once doing. And Esau mad. Satan mad. So it says, seeing it is a righteous thing, with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you that are troubled, rest with us. What do you mean rest with us? Go me to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah real quick, 2018. Go read Isaiah for me. What does it mean, rest with us? How you rest with us? Let's see. The Isaiah book of, 2018. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. And there a little. Read. But with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Go ahead. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. So what are we reading? What are we going over right now? We're going over what the rest is. The Bible says you find the rest in the precepts. Precept upon precept, line upon line. And this is the rest wherewith he shall call the weary to rest. That's why I rest in. When they say rest with us, it means come study with us. Come learn with us. Come build up your faith in the word of God with us. Right? Go to Romans 2, 17. Romans chapter 2. And let's read verse 17. Romans chapter 2, verse 17. Come on. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. Read it again. Behold, thou art called a Jew. And restest in the law. And restest in the law. Go ahead. And makest thy boast of God. When you rest, you're supposed to rest in God's laws. You're supposed to receive comfort from God's laws that you may have hope. Knowing if I keep this, God going gonna, gonna to save me and my people. Well, I'm troubled, but I'm going to rest in these commandments. I'm going I'm to keep the Sabbath. I'm going to keep the moon, new moon. Some of y'all, you know, you, you make excuses why you can't come to the new moon, why you can't come to the Sabbath. It is what it is. That's on you. You know what I mean? We ain't begging you to do God's work. We'll exhort you and we'll continue to do classes to try to build you up in the faith. But we ain't going to make you do it. Our job is to warn you. You keep living how you're living. You keep doing what you're doing. You keep making excuses. That's on you. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be at the Sabbath. Rain, sleet, or snow, Lord's will. Right? Um, give me that video real quick that I wanted you to play, that Lobby 3. So watch this. So I'm going to show you this, this video. I want you to start at 10 minutes and 37 seconds. This is the mindset of these people, man. These are the things that they're doing. But you got to rest with the prophets. You got to rest in the law. Study your scriptures. Get on the conference call, the Titus 2, so on and so forth. How about you find an excuse to keep the Sabbath? How you know how people find an excuse not to keep the Sabbath? Why don't you find an excuse to keep it? Well, so if I don't show up at the Sabbath, then that sister right there might be out of the spirit because she ain't seen me in a while. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go. You know what I'm saying? Like find a reason to go instead of trying to find a reason not to go. You start going out like, man, I really ain't got nothing. Damn, I used that excuse last week. Oh, uh, baby girl nose running. Can't come to the Sabbath. <laughs> going there, baby girl, good. Like, damn, y'all nose ain't even looking running like that. <laughs> oh, you coughing? Darn, you can't go to the Sabbath. Can't she? My baby coughing, y'all. She coughing. I'm telling you. Wait a minute. Is that a nail in my tie? That's a nail. We can't drive on that. No, we can't. We ain't going to make it to the school. You live two blocks away. It don't matter. It's just a nail. 
Don't you know people in the body can pick you up? That you know that you've been knowing for five years, six years? Nah, nah, nah. You know, see, I don't like to ride with other folks. You know, you can't never trust everybody in the truth. You know what I'm saying? The hell out of here, man. You don't want to come to the set. Just say it. Now, if you sick, that's one thing. So, you know, they get mad. They start right, bitch. Captain, get a light. And I'm sick. And every week he get on me not coming to. No, I'm not talking about if you're sick. Okay? If, you're, if it's really an issue, don't, you know, don't come. Don't get us all sick. I'm talking about you that are fine and well who was doing backflips on Thursday night. And Friday morning, you ran to go to the, to the bank to cash that check that the white man just paid you. Then all of a sudden, 10 minutes before sundown, <coughs> you ain't going to make it. Tell you. You know, if you ever saw somebody disguise their voice, you, they, they, you talk to them, you be like, hey, what's going on? They say, damn, it's Cap calling me. Uh, hey, Shalom, Cap, my son, Craig Bliss. <laughs> hey, you good, bro? No, man, I ain't doing too good. Some of y'all do that at your job. Tell me you ain't did that at your job before. Your boss was like, hey, man, you good? You at the, you at the site? Uh, oh, man, just going through it, man. It's just, man, you sound horrible, bro. Yeah, man, it's bad. It's real bad. Then you get off the phone with him. Whew, he fell for it. Yeah, we tell we turned up. <laughs> We turned up. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We all done did it. We all done did it. Play hooky. That's what your mama used to say. Play hooky. Some of y'all play hooky for the Sabbath. Damn. God command me. All right. You got the, I done filibustered long enough. You got a video for me? Okay. Here we go. 10 minutes, 37 seconds. Watch this, y'all. Who support equal rights for Palestinians. Can you stand with us strategically on my campus to have them publish stuff when we want it to publish? One girl that was running for our student senate. So cut it up a little bit. I still can't. I can barely hear it up here. Go back just a little bit. So I want y'all to pay attention. So there was a young girl, a Palestinian girl, which is Ishmael. She was running for um, an elected official on a college campus. All right. They used a group called Stand With Us to slander the young girl on campus. Okay? Watch this. Can you stand with us strategically on my campus to have them publish stuff when we want it to publish? See that? One girl that was running for our student senate, the last name's Dick, to my The summer of 2014, the Gaza bombings happened. There's a lot of activity in the Bay Area, a lot of protests. You hear like, Intifada, Intifada, Intifada. So, and I asked him, and I was like, oh, what does that mean? When Sumaya stood for the Student Senate at Berkeley, the Arabic word meaning uprising inspired her election slogan. My last name means uh, faith and governance, a way of life. There was other hashtags, was like Din for the Win, Din Dynasty, um, and then I really liked them. So when I launched my campaign, it just seemed fitting to launch it with, um, you know, hashtag Din She ran on the hashtag Din Tifada. That's her, like, Din Tifada. Her last name's Din. It's a Maya Din. And we're like, this isn't okay. Stand with us and launched a social media assault on Samaya's campaign and her character. We had a campaign party, it was a launch party, and an hour later, I get, I'm get i getting all these messages. We had Stand With Us attack this girl in an article. Pause Y'all see this? You see what they do, don't you? It said, we had Stand With Us, which is another one of their organizations, attack this girl in an article released on their Facebook. So while she's doing her little campaign party, they look on there and say, oh, yeah, we got her, and start slandering her name. She didn't, she didn't want no threat. She, went, she didn't have an issue with anybody. She just thought that Palestinians shouldn't be getting bombed. And Ishmael, I mean, and uh, Amalek said, to hell with you, we're going to bomb you, and you're going to accept the bombing. And you're going to let us bomb you and kill you and your people. And if you say something about it, we're going to crucify you on social media. That's what they did to this little young girl. 
Go ahead, play it. We had Stan with us attack this girl in an article, at least on their say. Facebook, right? They shared the screenshots and stuff and talked about, like, this isn't okay. The next day, Stand With Us completely took my campaign slogan out of you know, context. It was just an Arabic word, meaning uprising, and they redefined it to then serve their own purpose. The redefinition to me was killing of all Jews. Pause. This is absolutely disgusting. Blatant anti-Semitism. What? You see how they do? Go ahead. Samaya received a barrage Pause. of abuse. It's time to ship the Islamic migrants back to their deserts. Wait a minute. Ain't that anti-Semitism? Ain't that anti-Arabic? Anti-Islam? That's a threat, right? Go ahead. Social media. They called you a frustrated, uh, sexually repressed woman. <laughs> They said you were scum. They wanted to kick you out of the country. Want to kick out? Deport her. Tell her to go with the program or get out. Tell her to get with the program or get out. Like to deal with. Pause it. What's the program? Let, let Amalek do whatever the hell they want to do to you and your people. That's what the program is. Shut up. Don't speak against the evil we're doing. Let us do our evil, and you just accept it. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I distanced myself from that. I would go out. No, pause. And Please include the contact information for the campaign headquarters of this piece of shit, Samaya Dean at UC Berkeley. Mm. Go ahead. I'd be walking on campus. They need to be forced out of this country one way or another before they spread their hatred like a virus. I would be looking at me. Sick. Shame on her. I felt like I need to hide. It took me three days. I, I didn't sleep. I was just like, what? What's going on? We don't want Santa Claus's name, you know, on our name. She a terrorist. Outrageous. How dare she? People dying because of her stupidity and ignorance. People dying because of her? And y'all just bombed her people? Go ahead. I have all sorts of followers, and some of those people are a little crazy. We have people that are saying, like, that person should die. This girl was getting death threats. Mossad. If you don't know who the Mossad is, that's uh, Israel's, uh, basically, they take down so-called terrorists of Israel, all right? It's like they CIA or they secret government, okay? Go ahead. People are like, she's a terrorist, blah, blah, blah. How involved are they on campus politics then? Like, even they if it's money. They give money. So, how about They give money. Go ahead. that I help create on that campus is aware that it ruins relationships. So they doing, I'll pause, so they doing, y'all see how they do? Y'all see how they do? They, they fabricate these things, they manufacture these things, y'all. It don't even be real, that's why I said, look, when they start, when they already doing it to us, but when it heighten, just keep the commandments. Just keep the commandments. Go to 1 Corinthians 4.13, you see how they did her, she's not even an Israelite. You know what she said? She said she distanced herself. She stayed in her room for three days. That's what they hoping we gonna do, but we not doing that. So they like, oh shoot, we gotta stick by tactics. We gotta step our tactics up. Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter four verse thirteen. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscurring 
of our our scouring of all things unto this day. You see that it said we the filth of the world and we're gonna be defamed. We are being defamed. That's what they're doing. Anti-Semitic, hate group, all these different things. Anti-Semitists, terrorists, number three hate group in America, all that BS, knowing that y'all don't have any evidences of, of us doing any evil to anyone. So through our affliction, we cannot deviate from our righteousness. Go to uh second edge of seven sixteen. Go ahead. I got a few more scriptures. Second edit 716. So I just, this class ain't super long. I just want to let y'all see what we up against and how you cannot stop keeping the commandments because of the affliction we going through. Go ahead. Second edit chapter 7 and verse 16. Why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come rather than that which is present? Read. Then answered I and said, O Lord that bears rule. Thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the un ungodly should perish. So the righteous are going to inherit the kingdom of God, but that the unrighteous, or excuse me, the ungodly are going to perish. Go ahead. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. But we're going to go through tribulation. We're going to go through slander and be defamed. Go ahead. And hope for why? But we're hoping that if we continue in our righteousness, although we're going to go through some tribulation, we still going to get the kingdom. Read. For they that have done wickedly. For they, have, they that have done wickedly, meaning those that break God's commandments. Go ahead. Have suffered the straight things. They're going to go through tribulation too, but what? And yet shall not see the why. But they don't have a chance at getting the kingdom after they have gone fully into their sin and they don't want to repent from it. Watch this. Go to 2nd Edges 7, stand 7. Read 56 now. 2nd Edges chapter 7 and verse 56. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Read. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thy said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. So the battle is... You getting afflicted. You going through trial and tribulation, and the battle of your flesh is to say, do wickedly. Keep the, don't you want to keep the commandments? Just do whatever you want to do. That's what our people have figured for themselves in the church. They say, I ain't got to do no commandments. You know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm going through it. I'm going to smoke my dope. I need a stress reliever. All the people in my job do all day. They go outside. Every time you go outside, they, <laughs> I'm like, damn. There's a girl at my job. I call her Miss 15. She said, why you call me? And I said, because you known for taking a 15-minute break. Every day, five, six times a day, you see her out there. I'm like, damn, how many cigarettes you going to smoke today? Like, <laughs> what the hell? Ten cigarettes a day? That's ridiculous. That's your God. You can't wait for a 15-minute break. You a lie and say, yeah, I'm done with this job. And no, you ain't done with it just so you can smoke. They done figured in themselves, I'm going through it, and this is my only stress relief. I'm going to just smoke. That's because they have done wickedly. That's the battle. You can easily do the same thing, but you're fighting. Even though you're going through tribulation, you're fighting. If you overcome, you're going to get the victory. You understand? And you're going to receive the thing which the Lord says. Right? Now, watch this. Go to, um, the, so the condition is that even in your affliction, you must retain your righteousness. Many don't understand this. Therefore, they find comfort in their sins. They find comfort in their sins. We can't do that. Go to 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10. The book of 2 Thessalonians. Falling, I'm sorry. Falling back into sin is like when you get out of shape. You know how you be working real hard to get in shape and you start to feel good about yourself? And then you say, you know what? I ain't going to work hard today. I'm going to just fall back. I'm going to just chill. Then the next day, you're supposed to go back. You're like, man, I've been working out six months straight. I could take two days off. And that two days starts to a week. And then that week turns to three weeks. And before you know it, you out of shape again. You go back to the gym, you ain't got the same endurance. You're like, what the hell happened? That's what sin is. You fall back into sin, it's easy to fall deeper into it. You understand? Once you get out of it, once you start to put that stuff behind you, you have to continue to fight to keep it off of you, just like you fight to keep that weight off you. All right? 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Go ahead. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Go ahead. That, I, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See that? They have pleasure in their sin. They giving in. They not fighting. They going through their tribulation 
and they're not retaining righteousness. They said, look, I'm already going through it. I might as well just enjoy my sin. I might as well take pleasure in my unrighteousness. Now the Lord has given them that strong delusion, and they really believe they still going to get the kingdom. They, they really believe that the way they walk in is right. But this is the condition of the battle. You understand? Go to uh, Hebrews 11 and, 11 and 24. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Go ahead. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It said, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Go ahead. Choosing Wait. rather to suffer affliction. So because he, 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 he chose rather to suffer, affli suffer affliction, read. With the people of God. With the people of God. That's the Israelites. Go ahead. Then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season because the sinner's time is short. The triumphing of the wicked is short. It ain't a long time. And in your mind, you think 20, 30 years of balling, doing evil. Like some of your entertainers, some of your favorite singers, rappers, ball players, they've been in the media since you were a kid. They've been in the media for the last 30 years. And you're like, man, they living a great life. God said, man, that's short. One day is a thousand years to me. Or one year, a thousand years is one day to me. They, you see them doing that for 20, 20 years, that's five seconds to me. That's three seconds. I'm looking like one, two, three, and you're dead. <laughs> you're the one down here in this earthly time realm as a human that's looking like, man, they've been getting it in for 20 years, man. God done blessed them. No, you don't know the scriptures. You are not knowing the scriptures. The Bible says that the pleasure of sin is only for a season. It only lasts for a short time, and then it leaves you. Hebrews 3.13. Same book, chapter 3, verse 13. What does it do? What does sin do to you? The book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 13. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceiving because it feels good. That's why I said the pleasure of sin for a season. Sin feels good to your flesh. Sin will deceive you into thinking, this ain't that bad. What I'm doing ain't that bad. And the longer you continue to think that, the harder you become. You become hardened. Therefore, God then sends that strong delusion. You start believing that lie. You start thinking, I'm good with God. I'm good with the Lord. I ain't no sin. Even so, somebody show you, like, bro, that sin that you're doing, look right here, say it right here. No, I don't believe that no more. We ain't come on slave ships no more. All that crap. Because you take pleasure in unrighteousness. Go to Second uh, Edris, chapter 21, 7, verse 21 again. I'll read 21 now. The book of Second Edris, chapter 7, and verse 21. For God hath given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. God gave you what you need to live and what you need to do to avoid punishment. That's the straight commandments. Go ahead. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, even though God told you that, gave you that, taught you that, read. They were not obedient unto you, him. You're still not obedient. You're still doing your own thing. Go ahead. But spake against him. And you speak against God's commandments, read. And imagine vain things. You think you're still going to get the kingdom, even though you're doing much evil. You're still going through tribulation, but you're not keeping the commandments. But we're going through tribulation, and we're retaining our righteousness. We're still fighting to do the work of the Most High, to follow God, regardless of what we're going through. Those are the ones that's going to get the kingdom. Go ahead. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds. Go ahead. And said of the Most High that he is not. And knew not his ways. See, that said, this, they deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his way. They don't know the power of the Father. Go ahead. But his law have they despised. His law have they despised. They despised God's law. Go ahead. And denied his covenants. Don't be that, brothers and sisters. Do not deny God's covenants. Do not despise God's law. Love God's laws. Apply them to your life. Go ahead. And his statutes have they not been faithful. Damn. And have not performed his works. Watch this. And therefore, Israel. For the empty are empty things, and for the full are full things. You know what it means when they say the empty are empty things? You don't care nothing about your life. You empty. You just smoke and sex and lie and cheat people out of money. And you just you don't care. You empty. You have nothing to live for. You talk all about pleasing your flesh. That's it. That's it. You understand? You don't care nothing about really trying to get your life right with the Father. The Bible says... The empty are empty things, and for the fool are the fool things. What is the fool? The fool is the righteous. We know 
that is something better for us at the end. That's why we're keeping the commandments. The righteous understand that they must keep the commandments regardless of their current situation or affliction. Let's run through these real quick. Sirach 2 and 1. I told you we'll come back. Sirach 2 verse 1. Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, read. prepare thy soul for temptation. When you come to serve God, prepare your mind. You know you're going to go through it. Read. Set thy heart aright uh -huh. and constantly endure. Keep on pushing. And make not haste in time of trouble. And when you're going through something, don't run. Like what they're doing with the SPLC and all that, with these different things, slandering us. And you may see your husband's face on there, or they may have a side profile of one of you sisters at one of our uh, events. Got your profile up there. Got your business up there that you worked hard for, trying to get people to boycott your business. Are you going to stay or are you going to turn? You may be afraid that, I don't know, somebody from your job see you out teaching, brothers, and you're afraid of that thing. The spirit of fear jump on you. You understand? Now, we're not talking about some of you brothers that's high-ranking in the military and, you know, some of y'all brothers that do that. You know, obviously you shouldn't be teaching on the street right now until it's time, until the Lord release you from that thing. But as long as you're in them type of position, then okay, that's one thing. You've been working in uh, some type of job for 27 years and you one year from retiring. Then we're going to tell you to go teach right in front of the building that you work at? No, nah, of course we're not going to tell you to do that. I'm talking about those of you that are, are young, they're still aspiring to do certain things. You can't let the spirit of fear jump on you where now you don't want to teach God's word in certain areas because you're afraid that somebody might see you. Like, nah, that ain't the spirit of the prophets. The prophets shall never hold their peace. You understand? Read that again. Constantly endure. Go ahead. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Read. And make not haste in time of trouble. So when troublous times come, don't run. Do not run. If you don't believe that God going to protect you, then... I mean, what are you here for? The Lord is on our side. He going to allow certain things to happen to us, but he also is not going to forsake us. Go ahead. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Don't leave so you can be increased at your last end. Go ahead. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Go ahead. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. So I was reading this the other day, and the key word that I wanted to hone in was whatsoever. You're going to have different affliction, different trials. It could be marital trials, congregational trials, or your own personal trials, whether it's financially, whether it's sickness, whether whatever it is you're dealing with. It says whatsoever, no matter what it is that is brought upon you, take cheerfully and, the, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state, meaning when you're going through it, when you're really being tried. Go ahead. For gold is tried in the fire. Because you gold. And gold got to be purged of its impurities so it can be what God made it to be. It can shine like God made it to shine. So you got to be purged of the, the little impurities that's in you. Sometimes y'all sisters complain, say, oh, my husband on me. He, uh, you just on me. You just on me today. Like, yeah, because you gold, damn it. And you need to be purged. And I see things in you that you don't see about yourself. And I'm trying to make you see it. Same thing with the brothers. All of us get uh, corrected, y'all. I don't know why y'all think any of us are above correction. We're not. We all get corrected. We all get chewed out. We all get shown in the scriptures what we're wrong. We all get cut. But the Bible said gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men. You are an acceptable man, brother. Sister, you are an acceptable sister. So you got to be burned in that furnace of adversity. You got to go through some things. God got to prove you. Go to Job 1. Remember it said, Whatsoever is brought upon thee. Let's deal with Job real quick. Job chapter 1, and I want you to read verse uh, 9. The book of Job chapter 1 in verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for not? Does Job fear you for nothing, God? Read. Hast not thou made an hedge about him uh -huh. and about his house uh -huh. and about all that he hath on every side? Come on. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands Read. and his substance is increased in the land. So J Satan is saying, Lord, you done put a hedge around Job and around everything that he has. And he only serve you because it's easy to serve you when you're prospering. Lord, let me try him. I'm telling you. Remove that head. And I'm telling you, he's going to curse you to your face. Watch. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has. Start touching his finances. Start touching his job situation. Let his wife get out the spirit. Touch his children. Take away his, 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 his livelihood. Watch. He'll start coming to the Sabbath. 
Trust you. He'll say, I don't want to teach on the street no more. I'm telling you. Go ahead. And he will curse thee to thy face. He'll, you, you do realize that when God has put you in a position and you say you don't want to be in that position no more, whatever it may be, or you can only fulfill the role that God put you in if you're over here or if the circumstances are perfect, it's Wednesday at 2 o'clock and the shadow, of the, the, the shadow of the sun is 25 degrees this way, then I can go out there and do your work. But if it's 31 degrees, Lord, I ain't going to be able to do it. You understand what you're saying? The Bible says he you will curse God to your face. You cursing God to his face. He made you a prophet. He made you sisters prophetess. Yeah, y'all sisters prophetess. Y'all supposed to be prophesying. You listen to Titus 2. I'm supposed to be going in. I'm like, damn, I'm supposed to put some cold air priest. Let me get up out of here if somebody said they're teaching me. <laughs> Sometimes I'm supposed to be in the spirit, man. I'm telling you. Even on Upload God Law, we make fun of y'all. We just be messing with you. We love y'all. But on upload God laws, sometimes when I chime in, sometimes I be at work, I have my earbud in. I might tune in to, to upload God law. They don't know I'm there. I'm just listening. And I listen to the sister. I uploaded this scripture today. I uploaded that scripture today. I said, man, some of these sisters really be in the spirit. You know, that's to me, that's refreshing because we need y'all to be in the spirit. We give y'all a hard time because a lot of y'all don't be moving in the right spirit. So we be on the sisters. But when I hear, okay, sisters is studying. I hear that they attending Titus 2. I see the sisters trying to work on themselves, get counsel, and they work on it. To me, I say, okay, I'll pray to the Lord. That's the spirit of a prophetess. That's the way the sisters moved in the body, in the Bible, okay? But don't curse God to his face, sisters, okay? Don't curse him to his face because you're getting tried. Read it again, verse 11. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. Mm. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So that's his money. That's how he make his livelihood. That's how he feed his family. So that's one thing. Go ahead. While he was yet speaking. And while this brother was telling him this bad news, here come another brother. Go ahead. There came also another and said, The five God has fallen from heaven and have burnt, burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So he got more bad news. He's like, God, dog, I just found out about the sheep. I mean, I just found out about the oxen and, 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 the, um, and the asses and the servants. Now somebody telling me fire just came out of nowhere out of the sky and it burnt up my sheep too. And the servants? Come on, man. Read. While he was yet speaking. And while this dude was giving him bad news, here comes somebody else. While he was yet speaking. Imagine this. So imagine, so I'm going to be the bottom of verse 15, and you be verse 16, okay? So, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. The five gods have fallen from heaven and have burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone the to tell thee. Then, Job, the Chaldeans fell upon, uh, and the three bands fell upon the camels and have carried them away and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only alone am escaped to tell thee. Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine, Job. Dude, think about it. Imagine how you would feel. Like, that's why we had to read it like that. So you would feel what Job felt. Imagine, you know how something happened in your stomach? You had that little, that little nervous feeling over your, coming your stomach. I don't know about y'all. I used to get that before basketball games. When I used to play games, I used to get real, real nervous before the game. And I had that little spirit or uh, feeling in me, like, what if I don't play good? What? You, all these, this adrenaline rush through you. Imagine hearing this. I done lost this. I done lost that. And then your sons and your daughters. All this stuff hitting you at one time. That's how Job felt. Let's, let's read again, verse 17. Go ahead and read. Verse 17. Uh -huh. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and it carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Read. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, 
There came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So, man, I'm telling you, that's some real deal affliction right there. The Lord, when, 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 when the Lord gave um, Satan license, he said, go ahead, touch him. Satan got right on his job. That's what y'all don't realize. When you be going through these things back to back to back to back to back, that means the spirit and the glory of God rest upon you. This is a manifest token that you walking in the spirit of God, that you keeping the commandments. Satan doesn't ask for your name personally. He said, man, look, I'm telling you, get a lie. He going to curse you, Lord. Just let, let me touch his bank account. Let me touch his finances. Let me touch his family. Let me make him sick. That's why I said whatsoever is brought upon thee, because Job got it all at one time. Job got it all at one time. Keep reading. Then Job arose and rent his mantle mm. and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Read. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. Go, go ahead. The Lord gave, and the Lord have taken away. You know, Joel said, you know what? God done took it from me. He gave it to me, and now he's taking it from me. Imagine this, the disposition of this man. He had to be righteous. He had to retain his righteousness. Go ahead. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Damn. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Go ahead. Job chapter 2 and verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity. Look, I told you he was going to do it. Look at him. He holding fast his integrity. I told you. Go ahead. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So the Lord said, I know this man. I already know how he going to move. That's what I hope God said that about me. I hope God said that about y'all. You understand the way he said, look, man, I'm telling you, whatever you bring upon this brother or this sister, she going to still hold the line because she loved me. And she got integrity. He got integrity. He going to hold fast regardless, even though I'm coming against him without a cause because you done moved me against him. Go ahead. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yea, all that a man have will he give for his life. So Satan had to be around a long time to know that if you touch somebody's skin, he, he had to have examples of this over the thousands of years he was living. He looking like, man, look, I'm telling you, I know man. And man love their skin. They love their health. Go ahead. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Take away, make him sick. You know how it is when you be sick, you had a stomach ache, you be like, Lord, if you let this pass by, I will not eat that much ice cream again. I will not, Lord. I, I promise my stomach killing me. Thing. You know how you feel that way? And you start praying. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, uh -huh. but save his life. Go ahead. Don't kill him. Go ahead. But so, with, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Go ahead. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all. Damn. And he sat down among the... So he the took a piece of a pot. He was itching so bad and so sore, he took that pot and he scraped his arm to try to get them sores off. Woof. Go ahead. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? So she poke her head in there. He going through it. And here she come, poke her head in there like, You still maintaining your integrity? Go ahead. Curse God and die. She told him, Curse God and die. She said, You know, just die. Just say, To hell with you, Lord, and die. He don't love you. He don't forsook you. Go ahead. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. You crazy. Go ahead. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Uh -huh. And shall we not receive evil? Mm. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So Job retained his righteousness in affliction. Like, no, I ain't going to go against the Lord. Because, brothers, sisters, when things ain't going right in your life, you forget about the bad days. You really do. But when things ain't going bad in your life, oh, Lord. You forget about all the good the Lord did for you. Go to that in Sirach 11. We read the other night. Go to Sirach 11 real quick, then I'm going to close out with 
one more scripture. I want to finish out with Job. Uh, Sirach 11 and 24, I think. Sirach chapter 11 and verse 20, 25. 25, that's it. In the day of prosperity, there's a forgetfulness of affliction. You see that? When you prosper, you forget about affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. You see that? But when you're going through it, you don't remember that money. You don't remember that time the Lord blessed you. You woke up not being sick. He took that sickness from you. You forget about all that when you're going through something. Go ahead. For it is an easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. Read. The affliction of an hour maketh the man forget pleasure. You forget about that pleasure. You be hurting for one hour and you forget about pleasure. Go ahead. And in his end, his deeds shall be discovered. Watch this. Go to Job 42 and 9. Let's finish out with Job real quick. Job 42, verse 9. Yes, sir. Job chapter 42, verse 9. So Eliphaz, the Timnite, and Bildad, the Shuite, and Zophar, the Naamathite, went and did according as the Lord commanded them. Uh -huh. The Lord also accepted Job. Read. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Go ahead. When he prayed for his friends. Read. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. He gave him more than what he had lost previously. Go ahead. Then came there unto him all his brethren. And all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So, Joel went through all that, and all these people left him. But when they saw that he endured and the Lord was dealing with him, and he prospered again, they came back and was like, man, I ain't know you was going to make it, bro. I ain't going to lie. I thought you was done. I thought you were going to curse God and die like your wife said. The Lord blessed him with everything that he had lost. So when you're going through your tough times, retain your righteousness. Maintain your integrity. Don't give up on the most high. He chastening you because he loves you because the spirit and the glory of God rests upon you. They're going to come against us. They are coming against us. But it ain't going to stop the fact that the Lord loves us and that his spirit on us. Don't forsake God. Don't turn your back on the Father. All right, Psalms 119 and 87. 87 and then 92. And these are my last two. Psalms 119, verse 87. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 87. Yes, sir. They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. See that? They had almost consumed me upon earth. I almost died, but I forsook not thy precepts. I ain't stopped believing. I didn't stop keeping the commandment. This is what King David saying. Skip to 92. Verse 92. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in mine affliction. I would have perished in mine affliction if your law hadn't been my delight. You got to love God's laws. You got to love the Sabbath and the feast days and the brotherhood and the sisterhood and doing righteousness. Retain your righteousness when you're being afflicted. That's the only way. That's the only way we're going to make it through this. You understand? It's the only way way all right so y'all stay in the spirit stay strong in the lord all right never give up never give in okay most high quite bless slow what is the nation nation is men leading by example nation is family 